When I woke up today, I knew that I would be making a video on the general shareholders meeting that happened early this morning in Japan. Well, early this morning for us. And I find it fascinating that this is the topic we're covering out of it. Now, to be clear, the shareholder meeting had a lot of questions about next generation hardware. You could definitely tell that there are several investors ready to move on, ready to see what's next, other investors that aren't, and potentially some cold responses from Nintendo in some cases. Uh, there was one translation I saw where Nintendo might have called third-party developers arrogant, uh, but the reason we're not going to go over all that stuff is because the way these translations work with the information available seems a bit rough around the edges. So instead of putting words in the investors' mouths or putting words into Nintendo's responses, we're going to wait until Nintendo at least releases the official documentation from it, well, even if it's in Japanese, so we can get a translation that way. Or obviously, they always end up releasing their own English translation of the of the meeting. So we're just going to kind of wait until we have the, the, the details with the full context because it does seem like this was a rather very, very interesting meeting, but we are going to talk about it today because, well, if you guys recall, there was a time when somebody bought a bunch of stock in Nintendo just to go ask them some simple questions. And it turns out somebody did it again, but this time it wasn't really to ask a question. It was more to make a statement, uh, a very heated, ranty statement that apparently many people in attendance of this shareholder meeting, so fellow shareholders, found to be extremely disrespectful, and the rant was about Splatoon 3. Yeah. To talk about uh, not, not what you expected at one of these shareholder meetings, someone going on a long tirade about Splatoon 3, to which Nintendo clearly wasn't going to give any sort of response. But I want to talk about this because it, it's just, I'm, I'm kind of flabbergasted. Uh, and also, how much per, the money did this person spend? How much stock did they have to buy to even be in this meeting? Uh, it, that's also quite interesting as well. So let's talk about that after I remind you guys that we're on our road to 133,000 subscribers. I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel because if you do, we just might get there. We do have a long-term goal as well of 150,000 subscribers for 2023. So I would just appreciate all of you guys' support if you're enjoying the video, of course, right? We want people who enjoy the content. All right, let's get into this. And this is just, okay, let me read this. I'm getting it off Nintendo Everything uh, who... Got it from N Styles and some words from, well, we actually know who this person is. Uh, let's get into it. It says a fan spends over $3,500 to rant about Splatoon 3 at the Nintendo shareholder meeting. Some bizarre situations have occurred at Nintendo's financial meetings in the past, but one of these strangest happenings took place earlier today. The Bing N held its annual shareholder meeting, and per usual, it included a Q&A session. Reports have surfaced that someone was ranting loudly about female characters' perceived preferential treatment in Splatoon 3 regarding customization. This person felt there is a lack of options for male characters, including hairstyles and emotes, compared to those available to the female counterpart. N. Styles, who attended the event, says the rant went on before Nintendo President Shintaro Furukawa was interrupted. The fan, like the like Chintura Furukawa tried to stop it. He's like, hey, your question's too long, basically. Like, can we, you know, wrap this up? And the attendee was told, obviously, that it was too long. But he, he continued to rant anyway. He eventually finished, and Furukawa simply said, thank you for your interest in playing our game. We appreciate your valuable opinion. Now, Twitter user Haru Kataku I don't know, I'm butchering it, it's H-A-R-U-I-K-A-T-A-K-O, has come forward to claim that he was the person in the meeting doing the rant. He purchased uh, $3,570 US worth of tickets, aka shares, in Nintendo so that they could attend. He previously sent letters to Nintendo, but since they never got a reply, he bought the shares in hopes of talking with Nintendo directly. He did resell items in order to afford these shares, such as his Switch OLED. Video Game Chronicle has this translation of one of his tweets and comments. 
at the Nintendo shareholders meeting, I complained about the current cold treatment of Splatoon boys. Halfway through, I was told there are other people who want to ask questions, so the second half took a lot longer than I planned, but I did manage to tell them. Um, this is wild that a, a fan that just doesn't like a creative choice and thinks that uh, males are being not represented as well in Splatoon as females, going off, I, this is not... <laughs> Uh, look, the, Nintendo's not going to make changes to Splatoon 3 because of this rant. Can we be clear? This rant might have made him feel personally better. I told Nintendo they wouldn't respond to me. They still didn't respond to you. They're ignoring you. They're probably going to start implementing measures to figure out how to prevent questions like that ever making it to the, the, the floor. Because the bottom line is there is a certain air of professionalism in the approach, and it wasn't even a question, right? This was a Q&A section. This was where shareholders were supposed to get questions in, and he didn't really have a question. He just wanted to go on a long tirade monologue speech to Nintendo to basically force them to change representation in Splatoon 3 and options, and th this is just not how you go about things. And what I find a little frustrating is some of the responses uh, in the comment section on Nintendo Everything. I, they, they really caught me off guard, and I'm sure some responses on uh, YouTube here are going to catch me off guard as well. So, like, this Link to Metroid guy said, Nintendo don't listen to their fans, not their letters, not even their president when being directly addressed. The, les the lesson is never try. You tried your best. Don't, you know, you failed miserably. It, it, it's it, They're acting like Nintendo's disrespecting fans because they didn't respond to this person. Uh, Dusty Stars then said, this is sad. I feel bad for this person. Seriously, hope after this experience he just moves on from Nintendo because it's not worth it. They are not the same company as before and will now ignore you if you do not consume their dump. I, I don't... This is... This is this is just weird. Um, Just, just very, very weird. Like... This isn't how you go about talking about things. There's a lack of professionalism. The president, Shintaro Furukawa, doesn't make all the creative decisions. I don't think he makes any of the creative decisions for the games. And Nintendo is very aware of fan feedback online. They take that in consideration, typically, their next go-around. So if there is a large groundswell of complaints over the lack of customization and emotes for the male options in Splatoon 3, that is something they would take in consideration for, say, Splatoon 3 DLC or Splatoon 4 in the future. Like, that's not something they're going to go in and fundamentally change in the current game. Like, they're not going to release a patch to change that kind of stuff because they're too focused on other things like adding new maps, adding new modes, adding new weapons, and, yes, working on the DLC. So it, it, it's sort of a frustrating thing as we've seen Nintendo has actually paid attention to the internet groundswell. I also don't think I've ever heard this complaint about Splatoon 3, which sort of tells me that this might have just been a very small or, or just this individual's problem with the game. If you actually go to his Twitter profile, there's actually a number of people on his tweets telling him that not only is he wrong, but his opinions on this were wrong, but that this is just not what you do. You just don't go to the top of the chain and try to make people feel bad for you because you sold your Switch OLED just so you could rant to the president thinking that's going to actually make a difference and get you what you specifically want in a game. It, it's very, very weird and, and one of these comments i actually really liked over on nintendo everything um it came from zbar is that you only need three thousand five hundred dollars in shares to go on an extended rant directly to the president of the nintendo that's actually cheaper than what i thought it would be and and that's that's the fun take on this is it really isn't that much money to get into a shareholder meeting to ask nintendo a question like think about that it, it's actually not that bad so uh i i guess if you ever wanted to ask nintendo a question directly, and maybe a question they actually would answer, uh, then it's it's really not that expensive to do that. You, you you know, a lot of people thought you know it would be something that would break the bank, but for some people, hey, you know what, thirty five hundred just to ask Nintendo a question. There might be a fan who finally does it to ask them something Nintendo can answer, rather than going in there to put on a show. Uh, the person was clearly attention seeking and. 
kind of acting like a toddler. I, I think that's sort of my takeaway from this. I don't know the person. Obviously, they're they're Japanese, and and, and I don't know you know why they thought that going on a rant, um, and and a rant that people in attendance said was pretty insulting. Like it wasn't, it, it wasn't done in a way that came across as an impassioned fan. It kind of came across to many of them as a child whining for not getting exactly what they want. Uh, but what are you gonna do? I uh, not what not the story I thought I thought about today. I thought maybe we'd have news on Nintendo's non-response to Switch Two questions, or we'd have news. But this is this is insane, man. Like this is this is like the world of Twitter and the internet happening in real life at an actual Nintendo business meeting. I, this just. <laughs> and you know what? I give credit to Shintaro Furukawa holding the professionalism, saying, hey, thank you. We value your opinion. Like, credit to you, man, for holding it together because I would have been like, security, security, get this guy out of here. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video. Yeah.